Well, what's up, people? Nothing like a worldwide catastrophe to put a smile back on my face. Now, the other day when I said I was quitting it all because I had some problems going on, they're still out there and they're not getting any better. But how could I stay away from you guys at this point? When I wake up in the morning, now, I, I, I took off Wednesday and Thursday, and I thought maybe it would have a calm end of the week, that I wouldn't have to be worried about stuff for just a week. Just give me a couple of days off. I don't have to pay attention to anything. Let me just hang out with my family and try to regroup with them, because things have been getting torn apart. Everybody's, everybody's being torn apart in my family. We're yelling at each other lately. Things are just not good. And I imagine that's going on in your family too. The stress level gets to a point where you don't act right. And I haven't been acting right towards my friends and my family. And I wanted all that to end. Plus I was going off a little bit off the deep end with my self-medication and all that stuff. So I just, just haven't been right. So I wake up and uh, what do I hear? What do I hear? The first thing I hear is a once in a lifetime event. And I thought, Oh my, this can't be good. And the next thing I see, I see NASDAQ futures gap down 85. Fantastic stuff, shithead. Fantastic. The 2018 fund, remember I was talking about stocks that I liked for the next 10 years? That's absolutely destroyed right now. It's amazing how these 200, 300 share lots now, I can't even tell you, I, I bought Couple of, I bought 100 shares of pot the other day. I'm already down 15 points on it. That's good work. That's good work. Now, here's what I suggest we all do. First of all, let's all give ourselves a nice hug. Mm. I took out my one of my favorite books. It is it's a book about Winston Churchill, about when time in this world was really out of catastrophe. Yeah, this seems like it's some real awful stuff, and it is. But you know what? If we are headed towards Armageddon and the New World Order, it might be better than what we have now, because obviously this is a slap in the face to what's been going on in the world over the last 15 or 20 years. The internet bubble, all these other bubbles, the stock market running out of control, housing market out of control. This is what we needed, right? A big, fat, global recession to wake up everybody. Now what we have to hope for, and I really hope, that the tensions, like the tensions in my life, have caused me to say things and do things that maybe I wouldn't ordinarily do. The tensions around the world might cause some world leaders to do things that they wouldn't normally do, and it's just, spark another world war. And I, I know, it's a dark thing to think about, but that's what happens. Money will drive you insane, and money being sucked from you will make you do things that you would normally do. That's why you throw on the carpenters and you try to ignore it as for as long as you possibly can. But eventually, the reality seeps back in. That's where the alcohol and the drugs come in. And barking it out, friends, Barking it out just ain't cutting it right now, I'm telling you. Trust me, I'm all for barking it out, but it's just not cutting it. So there's no escape right now. There's no escape from the reality that we are living in, possibly as a 37-year-old person, sorry, 36-year-old, my birthday's not for another couple of weeks, coming at you as a young adult with children. This is officially the most stressful and worst time of my life. I thought I had a bad time, stressed out about some, some exam. So all you students out there, you can all just go kill yourselves because you don't know what stress is. Oh, I got a test on Monday and another one on Tuesday. Yeah, think about this. That's the least stress you're gonna have in your life. But here's the hope, students of the future. You are the future. Please, pick up a newspaper, pick up a book, learn what happened in these last couple of years to the world and try not to have it happen again. Of course, you might just want to open up a sword sharpening shop like me, and prostitution and sword sharpening might all I have to hold on to in the future. I already bought war paint because it's Halloween, I got my war paint ready because it's, 
We're here. We're here. Is is this is it, right? We found Armageddon. It's when you wake up in the morning and people are using the phrase once in a lifetime event. Once in a lifetime event. So what are we going to do about this once in a lifetime event? Are we going to sit here in horror and just cry about it? Because when the futures do open up, when the market opens up, you know we're going to be going down a little bit, right? Just so all the people that wanted to just say, screw this, I'm out forever, like me. I'm selling at the open, and I'm hoping that we go down a little bit more. Oh, God. I, I, we better go down a little bit more, because then I'll be real upset. But if we start to go up, that's going to be some massive squeeze. So what I suggest, and what I've been suggesting to you all along, go to cash. So these once-in-a-lifetime events can affect you in a positive way. If you're in cash right now, you're thinking, this is awesome. I get to buy some stuff here at the lows of their lives. I get to buy stuff where I wanted to buy it three weeks ago when the market was crashing. Because now we're going to be, we're not even at that point. The Dow looks like it's going to open up at 8,100, right? So just put on your carpenters and read about someone who looked Armageddon in the face and had the... Where with the, what's the, she was she baby? Had the ability to just get a country and a world through it by calming the fears. So let's just, just take a deep breath. So what that you bought something yesterday and you're down 20% overnight? It's all right, it's only money, right? Yeah, it's only money if you don't have to pay your bills, if you're living in a box, but you know what? None of us are. It's only money. I love that saying. It's only money. <laughs> it's only money when they're putting up a, a billboard on my front door that I can't come into my own house. Yeah, it's only money when there's a guy outside towing my car away. Yeah. It's only money when I can't send my kid to the school that he wants to go to. It's only money. Yeah. So, let's all just pack up. And set those tents up in the Central Park because that's where we're headed. It's a great, great world we're living in. Yeah. And you know, I couldn't leave you alone because at least what we have is hit the bid to wallow in misery together. Together. And I'm not going to be in the chat room today because I'm really going to be looking forward to trading this day because I got to make something out of this or that's it. I'm opening up a vein sitting in the bathtub and just calling it a life. Now, I'm not condoning suicide right now. But if you are going to do suicide, I have been considering a lot of different ways that you could do it. You know, there's always a standard ways. Jumping out of a plane, my friends, probably is the best way to go. And the thing is, they don't let you jump out of a plane without someone on your back the first couple of times. So you actually have to do premeditated jumping. you got to jump, and the guy will be on your back. And he'll be like, oh, don't worry about it. You're thinking, ah, I don't really give a shit if you open up the chute <laughs> if you don't. He's all jacked up, you know, he's be one of those guys, those jumpers guys. Yeah, buddy, all right, we're going out for our first jump. And he'll be just like, all right, yeah, when's the third time when I get to go by myself? All right, yeah, all right, let's go, yeah, jump. And he'll be all, all excited, and he'll be just waiting to see if the chute doesn't open. And then that third time, that's got to be some fun stuff. Jumping out of a plane with full intentions that you're not going to open up the chute. Yeah! Just plummeting to earth with no intentions of opening that chute. In a sick, sick, twisted way, that's gotta be a lot of fun. Plummeting at 9.8 meters per second, knowing for the fact that your head is gonna be a part of your feet in just moments. In a, in a, in a twisted world, that's a lot of fun. Wouldn't you think that's the good way of going out? You know what, but that's so premeditated, you gotta make two or three jumps and finally get to go pack your own chute. I love when, I, I read about it one time, in the headline to jumping out of the plane said, you get to pack your own chute. Pack your own chute? I don't even pack a lunch anymore. Pack my own chute. I would never jump out of a plane ever, even if it was for the intentions of killing myself. I would just be too scared going up. But, uh, get your swords ready, people, because this is just bullshit. Bullshit. All right, well, that's enough for the carpenters, and I'm going back to read for a little while, and Try to figure out what the hell I'm going to do with my life because I think I'm going to get a job at a sanitation plant.